Hello, everybody. Um, coming back at you with a new video. Um, I've been post posting a lot about posting a lot of my music lately, like live shots of shows, and um, I've been letting my son do his thing with his toy reviews. And that's cool, and I thought about maybe doing a woodworking video again since it's been a while since I made one of those, but. It's been so long since I've done any woodworking that even though I'm working on a project now, I'm a bit rusty and honestly, um, I figure why do a video where you, you just see me screw up all the time? Well, screw up more than just my normal videos. Oh, and I got the dog because if there's anything I hate more than my own voice is looking at my own face. So... I'm hiding behind the doggy icon. Hope you enjoy. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about something I've been thinking about for a while, and that is fandoms and why they suck. And this is going to be my analysis. So, here we go. Back at, first, let's start with some terms. Actually, you know what? Let's just go into it. Fan originally was the abbreviated form of fanatic. It meant somebody who really loved somebody, was inordinately devoted to it, just hyper passionate about something. You could like something and not be a fan. A fan was a very special type of person who liked something. They loved it, they lived for it. Then fan, I mean, in fact, you could not be a casual fan. The two were, it was an oxymoron, you know. Um, but eventually, fan got just put got to mean um, somebody who liked something, either strongly or casually, but just liking something. So, anyway, back in my time, in the olden days, you used to have things called fan bases. And these were groups of people who liked a TV show, movie series, author, band, whatever. But somebody who just liked, you know, who liked something. Um, they would be dispersed. Um, sometimes you would hook up with other people through ads in the back of magazines, sometimes fanzines, we catch one of those. Um, but usually your whole experience with a fan base was you, the thing, and maybe, you know, the people in your immediate circle. Uh, friends, family, you know, people you went to school with, people you worked with. Um, there were conventions, um, but most didn't go to those, um, usually because they were far away. Um, uh, most things um, had fan clubs, but that was a one-way street. You basically wrote in, usually giving them money, and they would send you like, you know, a pit autograph picture or a newsletter or something like that. And that's how it was. Um, and you were a part of that fan base for as long as you liked as as long as you liked it. And when you stopped liking it, you stopped being a fan. Um, that was it. I mean, maybe you would write to the fan club and say, "Hey, I don't think this TV show or this band or this author is as good as they used to be," or You'd write a letter to, like, the radio station or a TV station, maybe a production studio, but you pretty much knew that was a waste of time, that nobody would listen to you. So, you, unless you were hyper-passionate, like, you really think thought things went off the rail, or you were completely narcissistic, and you were just like, meh, okay, I used to like it, I don't like it, I'm done with it, time to move on. Now, fast forward to today, we have fandoms, and they're a lot different than fan bases. 
um, and one of the main things is the internet. Um, and where a fandom differs from a fan base is that whereas fan bases used to be people who actually like something from all the YouTube comments, Twitter comments, Facebook comments, and things of that nature I can now only assume a fandom is just people who absolutely hate, despise, and detest something. Because that's pretty much all you see. And it seems to be a contest of who can uh, crap talk something the most. Um, uh, in fact, um, I hate Star Wars. I haven't. I watched the first three movies and the Christmas special back in the day. Alright, but then it was something I grew out of and didn't like anymore. And I haven't watched the prequels, I haven't watched anything other, anything else Star, Star Trek related. Um, because I just thought Star, sorry, not Star Trek, Star Wars, Star Wars. <laughs> um, Star Wars. I used to be a big Star Trek fan. I used to be a really big Star Trek fan. Um... But anyway, no, I, I, I don't like Star Wars. It was, like I said, I kind of liked it when I was a little kid. Then by the time I got to be a teenager, I, I just watched them and thought, man, these are really cliched and dumb. And like I said, that was before the prequels. So, But no, I, I don't like Star Wars. But I read comments by supposed Star Wars fans, and I actually feel sorry for the people who make Star Wars stuff. It's like, man, I hate it, but dang, these fans are vicious. Um, and that's across the board. Uh, that's with any band, any movie franchise, anything. It's like, you know, name a property, name a band, name a movie series, and it's like, it's become insane. It's like, it's like, do people even like this? And I think what has brought this on is the internet and how it changes the way people react. Because like I said, before in the fan base days, your interaction with both other fans and the property was limited to none. Now, you can follow an author on Facebook, on Twitter, you can follow a band, you can follow a studio, a movie studio, you can follow actors, um, writers, directors, whatever. You can follow them directly, you can comment directly. Also, you can congregate with large groups of people, you know, millions of people in real time, instantaneously, which you couldn't do before. And that as kind of, and whilst that might be good in some ways, what it does is it creates an intimate, intimacy and an ownership that never existed before. Um, like I said, I used to be a big Star Trek fan. And if Gene Roddenberry or his successors, Rick Berman, I think it was, did something I didn't like, I was thought, okay, I don't like this, but this is their thing. This is their vision. I don't like where they're going with it, so I'm going to step aside. Um, I never thought for an instant of going... Now, I know you created this, I know this is your vision, but you don't understand it. But now that's how exact people feel. They feel an ownership over a property that, like I said, did not exist back in the day. It's like, no, this is for me. You're making this for me. I don't care if this was your vision to start out with. I like it. So now it's for me, and you will do as I say, and if you don't do what I say, I will make sure 
to burn it to the ground. Because if I don't like it, nobody else can like it. You know? Another thing that what all this has done as well is that if you, this you know feeling of attachment is that you also feel that once you like something or you feel it's part of you part of your identity then it is now sacrosanct it is holy it is perfect you cannot touch it you cannot change it you cannot remake it reboot it it's find the way it is and if you do reboot it remake it do anything then you, it's a personal attack on me and I must destroy you for it which is one also a weird thing I mean people would get place like oh why are people making oh another Batman film oh another Dracula film you know can't they come up with any I mean that was always there but can you imagine if that if you if if it exists, you can never remake it, ever. Exist it, we wouldn't have John Carpenter's The Thing. We wouldn't have um, Rob Zombie's take on Halloween, which I really liked. You you wouldn't have had the the, new, the updated version of The Hills Have Eyes, which I thought was better than the original. Um, heck, you wouldn't even have had the Universal versions of Dracula and Frankenstein because Thomas Edison did a version of Frankenstein from for his short-lived movie studio and then you had Nosferatu which was really Dracula they just changed the name so they wouldn't get sued for copyright and they got sued anyway but anyway different story um, oh you wouldn't have had David Cronenberg's The Fly there are a lot of great movies that are remakes of previous you know, properties that were great, and in some cases better than the original. But once again, in this era of modern day fandom, it's like, no. If, I, if it's a part of my childhood, if I like it, it is perfect and untouchable. Because it's mine. Same way. If I like something and it goes in a direction I don't like, then it must be destroyed. Other people can't like anything that I don't. And you can see this. You can see it in the comic book fandom, which has become a complete cancer. Star Wars. Star Trek to some point. Um, the Walking Dead, you know, and across the board with different authors and bands, you know, this isn't specific to one thing. This is something that's been going on that goes all across if um, entertainment. And then, of course, you also have elements of, especially in the comic book field. And other parts of the sci-fi, sci-fi fantasy horror community, elements of sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, too. Uh, this sort of like alt-right fan. Um, which I, like I said, that's that's definitely it's it, like I said, it's across the board, but it's more noticeable in the more sci-fi fandoms especially the comic book fandom, which is probably one of the worst fandoms of all. Um, so, what will it take to break this? Well, I think part of it is just realizing that times change, things change. That if you, like, if you loved the original Highlander film, that's good. That film still exists. All right, you can watch that whenever you want. You can stream it. You can own it on DVD. It, it's yours. That exists. And if they remake it, hey, maybe the remake will be good. Maybe it won't be good. 
Maybe people like it, maybe people don't like it. But you still have the original Highlander. And if somebody else likes the remake, well, fine. You know, just because you like something doesn't mean it's perfect. Just because you like something doesn't mean it can never be redone. Um, another thing is to realize that, you know, things change. And that any creative person has a right to change their work. For whatever reason. Even if it is just... To what in the what and we in the metal community used to call selling out, like man, Metallica really sold out. Okay, yeah, that's true, <laughs> but you know they had their own reasons to do it. I mean, they were a band that was making a certain type of music at to a certain level, and it's like okay, we either keep making the music we're doing, which means we peak and we'll drop off and spend the rest of our lives playing clubs. Um, have to work day jobs, or we change our sound and take it to the next level and become rich. And as much as I would have loved to keep hearing albums like Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, those albums would not have sold. The Black Album, Load, Reload, those albums sold. And as much as I could say, Oh, you sold out! They're not going to hear me because they're too busy counting their money. So, and sometimes an artist's visions just change. You can start out doing one thing and real, and as you grow as a person, you're like, okay, this is how I felt then, this is what I was going for then, but now I feel this way, and this is what I'm going to go for. You know, I'm an honor believer that when some when something hits, when something blows up, it's because the creator and the population at large were both in the same headspace at the same time. The artist was saying something that the general public wanted to hear, and the general public wanted to hear something that the artist was saying. And when those two di you know, diverge, either the art the public wants to hear something different, or the artist wants to say something different, then that's when things lose popularity and dissipate. And that happens to everything. Nothing remains popular forever. Some things never become popular. Um, as a fan of extreme metal, I know this for a fact. Um, but, you know, that's how things are. So, what to do? Outside of understanding things change, artists, has, artists have the right to change their vision if they, as they see fit. And if something gets remade, it doesn't negate the original. Another part is just realizing that there are more important things to be concerned with. That if a band or a TV show or an author or a movie series goes in a place that I don't like. Okay. You know, so what? You know, you know, I got real issues. I got bills to pay. I got children to raise. I got a career I'm trying to get off the ground after 20-some years. So I got real issues. Whether or not Thing X is still making stuff I like it's not really part of that equation. So, and finally, I think the main thing is just step away. It's like, I'm a fan of things, but I am not part of any fandom. I just don't react with other people because right now, that would be psychological suicide. Just like what you like, don't like what you don't like, and leave it at that. You know, go back to the old days where if you talked about something, you talked about with it with your, you know, friends, your family, your coworkers, your schoolmates, whatever. Because then you're looking at people in the eye, and if you start spouting off like an idiot, you can get punched in the face. 
so there's consequences for bad behavior. And just know that you can you can like stuff, and you can not like stuff, but you don't have to engage with anybody about it. They can just be your opinion, in private, to yourself. So, that's about it. That's my take. Um, if you don't like the video, if you don't like what I'm saying, hopefully you like the doggy. So, alrighty, I'm off. Later.